All right, so you've applied to hundreds of jobs online and you're just not getting the job. Today in this video, I'm gonna talk about three different things. The first, why you're not getting interviews from your online job application. Secondly, what I do for my coaching clients when they don't hear back from applying online. And finally, what to do if you're getting interviews but you're just not getting to the final stage. Stick around for the whole video and we're gonna cover those three topics very quickly. The first one, why are you not hearing back from your job applications online? And that means very simply put, you're not getting the first round interview. So there are three main causes for this. Firstly, you're not fit for the role. And remember, desire does not equal fit. A lot of people I meet, I'd love to be an investment banker, I'd love to be an equity research. Yeah, but you don't have the qualifications, you don't have experience, you don't have the skills, nothing matches. So you kind of have to look a little bit within yourself and make sure you're actually being honest to yourself. Secondly, your resume is just terrible. It doesn't matter what a good fit you are. If the way you're presenting yourself is awful, you're not gonna get past that stage. And finally, number three, there are just better candidates online. Now, if you're not fit for the role, there's really no solution. But for the other two, if your resume is terrible or they're just better candidates, you can get around the online application system. And let's jump into number two, which is how I help my clients. So just two nights ago, I had a client who was applying to a bunch of risk roles online and he was not getting a single bite. Well, that's not great news. And quite frankly, it's not good for me either trying to get help him get a job. So what did we do? Well, we went to backup mode and that is networking hardcore. Now I know you've heard networking wins, networking wins everything. Okay, so here are three networking tactics you can take. First of all, professional connections. And that doesn't have to mean first connections, that just means the role you're trying to get, find, start with entry level and work your way up, but find connections either through your friends or second connections, reach out, get 15 minute coffees. And this is specifically people who are working in the role that you desire. You wanna work in sales and trading? Find a trader who's an analyst, Find a trader who's an associate, and maybe from those conversations, have them introduce you to other people. Learn about what they do on the job. Build a connection, a personal connection with them, and hopefully, they will help refer you later on. Secondly, you can look at firm recruiters. So if you're interested, again, in sales and trading, what you can do is you can go to the top seven firms that you love and find out who the recruiters responsible for those internal teams are within the firm let's say Goldman Sachs. So you can go to LinkedIn, you can find out who the sales and trading recruiter is for Goldman Sachs and reach out. Might work, might not. Maybe you have a shared connection that you can use to get that. But if you have that conversation, you kind of went around the entire application route and the person who actually owns the jobs doesn't have to go through your resume anymore. And finally, external recruiters. And that just means recruiting firms who are tasked with filling these roles for the banks and for the hedge funds. There are thousands of them, maybe tens of thousands on LinkedIn. They're all over the place, but do they know you? And for most of you, the answer is no. You've just been apply, 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 apply online. But these people have jobs. They have hot jobs in their hand. They just want to find the right fit. And if they think you're right and your resume isn't great, or they're even better candidates, but if the recruiters believe in you, well, the firms believe in the recruiters because they pay them like 30K each hire. So they really believe in them. So if they go to bat for you, you will get it. And I can tell you from personal experience, when I was in school, had no experience, I've had recruiters go to hedge funds and say, this Mark guy, he's the real deal and he's gonna be a great analyst for you. And I got interviews. So that works. And finally, if you are getting the interviews, but you are not getting the actual jobs, well then, I'm, I don't know how to put this better, but you are the problem. And that can mean one of two things, really. It can mean your interview skills are weak, and that's just a whole array of things which we'll cover in a different video. That's confidence, that's eye contact, that's your disposition, just everything about the way you carry yourself and conduct the interview. The solution is, honestly, just practice, learn from people who know how to interview better, and do lots of mock interviews. And the second thing is your technical skills just don't match. And that means mainly your resume. So it can go either one of two ways. Either it can mean you have things in your resume that you're not being honest about, like you write Python proficient, and then they ask you a simple question. What's the difference between a list and a set? And you just don't know the answer? That's not cool. Then they're just gonna brand you as a liar. Or you do have the skills that you list out on your resume, but the actual requirements of the job, you just 
don't have those technical skills. And when they challenge you on the interview, you're just not performing well. I hope this helped. Please leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.